and today we'll be talking about choosing a wheelchair. We'll pretty much all of us be in that situation of, uh, you know, go shopping for a wheelchair. It's not easy, too many angles and measurements and colors and, you know, wheels should be round or square. We don't never, know, you know. So um, we'll be hearing about um, uh, from Nancy Shaw about her experience uh, on choosing a wheelchair. And um, then after that, we'll, uh, uh, from Brenly Mogul Rodman, um, she will be sharing with us a uh, recently published online, online pretty cool resource that it's going to help us through the um, process. And uh, well, without uh, much further ado, Nancy Cha, who sustained a spinal cord injury in 2003 at the level of T12, L1, and L2 incomplete. She graduated from the University of Toronto with a psychology degree. She works for Spinal Cord Injury Ontario as an information and resource specialist and video content developer. And in today's event, as I mentioned before, she will share her ex personal experience on getting a custom made wheelchair. Nancy, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. So, hi guys. So, I will, um, so I've been injured since 2003. So it's almost 20 years and I have, um, I have four wheelchairs uh, so far. And so in today's um, presentation, you will mostly learn from my mistakes. Um, the negative experience that I had uh, when it comes to getting a custom made wheelchair, which didn't really fit well and it stuck with me for at least five years. Um, it was extremely uncomfortable. It's like wearing a high heel shoes all the time and you cannot afford to buy another pair because it's not due until five, five years later. So getting the perfectly fit wheelchair is, is so important, especially um, if you are a newly injured person, it's very important that you are actively involved in the process, even though you might not be very educated and aware about spinal cord injury in general uh, at the time of your um, initial stage of your injury. So I'll share my story right now and I'm gonna share some photos. Mm. So this was me um, when I was uh, first injured. When I was in Lyndhurst, I had already gained about 60 pounds. Uh, just because of the side effects of my medication and also the fact that I wasn't moving well. So there was a lot of um, bodily changes to, to me, to myself, happened to me. Um, maybe even more than other people with spinal cord injury, just because I was taking a lot of the um, antidepressants. So this was the first wheelchair that I got. And I remember at the time I was still a patient at Lyndhurst and I was in a very bad uh, mental state. Um, and plus the fact that my parents, they don't really speak English that much. So they won't really, uh, they were not involved with the process either. Um, so it was my vendor and my uh, OT at Lyndhurst who would um, helping me find the best fit wheelchair. Um, at the time, I felt like I didn't have like a lot of research on wheelchair in general. Like even now, if you ask me to name like three brands of wheelchair, I would not be able to do it. Like it's, uh, I'm just a very girly girl. So I, I'm not um, into things like that. So at the time, um, I guess they just gave me a wheelchair that looks like the chair that I was using while I rehab. Uh, I had this swim away foot plate and um, everything is just bulky and heavy. Um, so I was using this chair for the next four years. What I realized is that it was probably the best fit at the time because it was very comfortable. Um, even though it was heavy, it's bulky, but 
I don't recall that there was any pain sitting on this wheelchair. However, as I became increasingly image uh, conscious, uh, I felt like I don't look very good in this chair. I have seen my peers, you know, they were like, they look like super paras. And so they can like zoom across the hallway with agility, with speed, and they look really cool in their wheelchair. Um, so I just didn't really like my wheelchair. And when I went back to school, it's always blocking the hallway. Like people have to line up just to pass through me. So I always became um, the center of unwanted attention just because I took so much visual space in, 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 in somebody's eyes. So, um, Looking back, uh, this chair was comfortable, but it didn't look very good. And it's a little bit hard to push just because it's heavy. Um, so four years later, hold on. So four years later, I, I lost a lot of weight and obviously that chair didn't fit me anymore. And I was not due yet for a new chair. Um, so my parents bought me a used chair for about my hundred dollars and this chair was super cool it's orange and i was told that this was um imported from europe so they don't have anything like this in canada and the chair was compact it's light and when i sit on it i can become a very agile person uh, i can wheel across the room very fast and know people always compliment on how cute the chair looks. So I really liked it. Um, however, um, the one thing I noticed is that um, it's not as comfortable as my bulky chair. Um, I tend to have a little bit of um, um, sore back. And also this chair was not custom made for me. It was somebody else's chair um, and I bought used. So it didn't fit me perfectly. It, and later on, I discovered it was actually designed for people who um, have a higher injury than I do, to have lower uh, control with the trunk muscle and also the previous owner of this chair is probably shorter than me. So this chair was not a really good fit, but I like the fact that it looks good and I can go faster with it. However, so it's not ideal. Okay, so this was my second um, ADP chair. Um, I made a fatal mistake um, because my orange chair at the time, I thought that, oh, maybe that's the best case scenario. That's the best possible chair I could ever get. So I asked the vendor to replicate the measurement on my chair without even measuring my body. So this chair, the like everything was a replicate of my orange chair. So what happened is, okay, so now that I have three chairs at home and, and, and obviously it's too crowded. So I got rid of my first bulky chair. I donated it to, to Lyndhurst, which was a big, big mistake. And I will tell you why. Um, so now that I'm using this ADP chair um, at um, full time, and I also realized that I have also grown since I was 18. Now that I'm probably like five centimeters taller when I was 18. So as I was sitting on this chair for a little bit longer period of time, I realized that I have grew out of this chair as well. And from this picture, you can see that there's a lot of gap between um, my knees and the edge of the cushion, which should not be the way it is. The, and also my knee is pointed uh, uh, upward, which means, um, which is not ideal either, because that would create some pressure on your bum, and then you can be prone to pressure sore. So this chair was not comfortable. Uh, it didn't take very long to, to help me, to let me discover that this is not the perfect fit. And now I'm stuck with this chair for five years, like full time, because I don't have that bulky chair anymore. Uh, so, okay. Okay, so when I was due for my third chair, so that's maybe like 10 years post-injury. Finally, this time, I was, um, 
I was um, contacted, no, so I contacted a vendor that I already know, like he is already my friend. So he could be really honest with me versus before when I was in a assessment process, the vendor was reluctant to challenge me on my beliefs, uh, which was based on false belief and lack of research. So this time, this vendor, because we are close, so he can just be variable with me and he can just tell me, teach me um, what he knows, which he knows better than I do, right? So he, he, so what he did is he completely measured my body and he found a chair that is best suitable for my height, for my weight, and everything now is completely uh, customed to my measurement. And the instant I, I sat on this chair, I realized that um, it's felt differently. Like it's very comfortable. Not only that, but it's compact. I can go faster. So this time comfort and uh, agility uh, can exist at the same time. Um, so over the years, um, just a, a few personal tips when it comes to uh, choosing a wheelchair. Um, which um, based on my personal experience and what I learned. Um, so first of all, when you, when you sit um, on the chair, your hand should be able to touch the axle. Um, so that would help you determine whether or not you are too tall or too short for the chair. Um, so that is a very important criteria when it comes to finding the best fit. And push handles. When I had my wheelchair, I felt like when, when people have push handles, it, it, it doesn't look very independent. It, it, it gives an impression of um, that you are not as uh, capable as people who don't have push handles. So I soon learned that this was not a good, um, um, uh, this is not, like this is, that shouldn't be the case because uh, you can actually install like those removable push handles. Because I found that there are many incidents, there are many uh, scenarios that I really do need somebody to push me. I, I have to put my pr pride aside and to admit that I need help if there's a big ramp or I just too tired to push. So it's appreciated that the wheelchair has push handles uh, just in case if you are too tired to push. So um, I really recommend to have push handles permanently installed, if not, um, at least have a, a space for it. Um, okay, back support. I used to think that when people have those like really low back support, they, they look really cool. So when I was in my 20s, I was really like really care about how the wheelchair looks. I wanted to look as cool as possible. But now I'm almost like, you no, know, in my 40s, I think comfort is much better, is much more important than look. So I would not recommend having a lower back. I would say the standard back, Obviously. it doesn't take that much more space. And then it still looks very cool. And I think the standard height is, is it's good enough. And, and I think if I grow older, if I have my an, an, another ADP chair, I would even choose the deep back because I but by this time, I'm done with looking good. Um, I wouldn't recommend the tall back because it would just make the entire chair so much heavier. Um, so if you're choosing like if you're young people, I think I would recommend a standard height uh, for the back rest. When it comes to foot rest, um, I used to have a footrest like the one you have on the right side. So what happened is if I don't wear shoes, my foot can get caught uh, between the gaps, which can uh, even cause injury uh, if it's twisted. So the one on the left, it's, it doesn't really take much visual space and it's, it's, a, it's a much larger uh, a, a foot rest and, and, and it, it can really help your foot stay in the right place, no matter how bumpy the terrain is. So I really recommend a foot rest that, is, uh, that has larger surface area. Um, even the ones that you know, comes out a little bit, like, so this one doesn't come out at all, but I think the one I have right now is actually uh, 
stick out uh, towards the other direction. And it's perfectly um, ideal. Uh, okay, so as I mentioned, I really regret it of donating my bulky wheelchair because right now I actually spent extra money um, purchasing a big wheelchair from Kijiji that was not my measurement. So what happened is I have a, a outdoor wheelchair and an indoor wheelchair. When I go outdoor, my chair tends to be more compact. Uh, I look better on that wheelchair, more, com more confident uh, in that wheelchair. But when I come back, I would uh, transfer onto a much more comfortable wheelchair with swing away footrest, which is ideal if I have to ride the motor mat, uh, higher back, right? And then also hand rest, arm rest. This is something that is definitely adds a lot of comfort level um, if you are um, using this wheelchair uh, at home. So, so right now um, I have two wheelchairs. I, have, I think this is, um, it's working out for me. It's it's like uh, when I go out, I wear high heels and when I come back, I want to wear slippers for comfort. Um, so these two systems works better for me. So my um, suggestion is that perhaps um, you can spend a little bit money on Kijiji to, to look for a chair that looks comfortable and you can use that when you're at home. And it can also be used as a backup chair, a backup chair just in case if your regular chair um, has any like re repairment needs. So, and also because of the pandemic, right? Um, having a different uh, chair, it, it really helps not bring the uh, virus into your home environment. Okay, so that's actually all I have to say. Um, well, that's yeah. a that's that's a great uh, great experience. Uh, well, not as fun experience, but uh, I'm you know you learn you've learned a lot, and and uh, and and it is part it is important to share it with with everyone else. And and you know, as a matter of fact, when you talked about the ba the you know the backrest, in my case, I use a low back like like the smaller back possible because it's what fits for me i mean it's mm -hmm. i like the you know independence and everything so it's like all those all those um options that are out there it's like for us to find the perfect fit so yeah uh, yeah for sure it's yeah. it's but it's my personal experience, my oh, yeah. opinion only. And I recommend that you try different types of backrest before you like decide what you really want. Yeah. Correct, correct. And that's why it's important to, to connect with, with your OT and have you know your professionals involved. And luckily for us, we have a great OT here.